I am late to the party. Late, I tell you. But I'm here nonetheless. What do you mean, what party? Inktober. Inktober? Yeah, you know what Inktober is. We did it last year, the year before that. You don't remember. Well, yeah, that's because if it's not an actual party, you're not interested. Hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Glad you could join me. Glad I could do an episode on Inktober 2019. I always love Inktober. I don't participate in the 31 day challenge, but I love to get out my ink supplies, look at them, try new pens, try techniques, practice master studies. And of course for watercolor, do a line and wash. And that's what I'm doing today. I've got sort of an old gnarly tree that I'm gonna do. And I'm actually gonna paint it with splashes. So without further ado, let's get to it. Well, I'm gonna paint this one in my Kilimanjaro watercolor journal. 140 pound Kilimanjaro cold press paper. A oh, wonderful, lovely paper. This particular book has these sketchbook pages kind of interspersed, uh, regular bond sketchbook pages. And I'm going to test out some pens. I got a Jet Pens uh, sample pack. I love their sample packs. Uh, I think I've kind of pitched these before. I don't get anything for pitching them. They're not a sponsor, they're not an affiliate. But uh, they put together these sample packs. If you're undecided or don't know much about pens, uh, they're great to do. I did the brush pen sample pack. This is the Copic Proof sample pack. But uh, most of these Copic Proof markers are also waterproof. Not all of them. Uh, there are several in here that I don't have. Like this Odo O2. Really neat pen. I've never seen one quite like this. This is a Pilot. I think that was an 03. Yeah, it's a fatter 03. Um, these are both waterproof. And I do have this fountain pen. This is a disposable fountain pen. You can't refill it. I had a little trouble getting that one started, but, uh, and those fountain pens are not waterproof. They are Copic proof. This is the Copic multi liner. I have a set of these, so this one was not unfamiliar, but they're great liners. I also have a preppy. Yeah, so I have a few of these. This preppy fountain pen, really good fountain pen. Also water soluble. So the two fountain pens in this set are not waterproof. They're just Copic proof. This was interesting, this Uni pen, a really fine uh, marker, the 0 0.05. You can see they're just a razor thin point. Copic uh, brush pen. Uh, I have a couple other brush pens of a Pentel and a Pilot. Uh, so this is a new one to add to my collection. That's a real brush, real nylon bristles. You can see there. And I probably will be using this. Uh, and I will be using this. This is the Tombow brush pen also, but it's a hard point brush pen, not with bristles. Um, and I love these too. Uh, I'm kind of f familiar with these. I have a zebra that I like a lot. So I'm going to probably use that one. I uh, did some tests, swatching and, and hatching. I just wanted to test that what they said was true. I have bought some Copics. I don't use Copic markers. I don't have any colors. I have this gray set for sketching. And I don't use them very much. I'm, uh, they're brand new. I'm going to start using them uh, just for a little bit of sketching. True to their word, these were Copic proof pens. So... And I'm also putting water over them to see what was waterproof. I think I knew already uh, pretty much all of them were waterproof except for the two fountain pens, which you will see there. The Copic, you see it running a bit. And the Preppy, you can't see it real well there. And it's on bond paper, actually they will run more on watercolor paper because of the sizing. But it did, it did run a little bit. Check out their sets. I'll leave a link. There may be a type of pen you're trying to find. They have like color sets, uh, as I mentioned, the brush, pen sampler, liner sampler, all sorts of samplers. So if there's, if you're looking for a particular type of pen, you don't know what you're looking for. Those those sampler sets are great. So yeah, just starting to draw this out. This is an old apple tree. Um, it's had some disease problems, so it's had the fool pruned out of it. I mean, so that's why you see all these little prune nubs, but uh, it's made for an interesting sort of a gnarly tree. 
So I like to draw this out in detail first. Uh, that's usually pretty necessary for me in my inking. I get the best inking when I have a really good detailed drawing. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use this Tombow uh, hard point brush marker because I get a nice thin to thick line where I want it. And it worked out really well. I, I like the pen a lot. It's very similar to a zebra that I have like this. And there's not much to say about the inking. It's it's very deliberate. I, I start with uh, outlines where I know I want outlines. I will jump around a lot. Uh, I like to do a piece as a whole. A little here, a little over there. Some people can work systematically, but I find if I do that, um, I get to a point and then I wish I had done this or not done that in certain areas. So I like to jump around, put only in what lines I know need to be there, maybe do a little bit of hatching uh, just to see how it's going to work in an area and come back to it. So that's just to preface uh, what you see. You see me jumping all around. That's that's by design and that works what works best for me, especially on pen and ink. And an ink is an unforgiving medium, so if you don't get it down right, you know, it's really hard to change. <laughs> Done a lot of inking in my years. And, you know, it's just something that you have to do a lot of to get good at it. And people tend to sort of overdo contours, I think. I've slowed it down here just so you can see. I'm going in and... and Picking out some of the low lights now and some of the details close to or in the shadows. Again, this helps me see where the range is or can be, how simply I can treat this or how much I need to add. It's always a danger of adding too much hatching. You want enough, but not too much. And really experience uh, is about the only thing that tells you and your own personal artistic taste, of course. I like simply inked pieces, but I like detailed ones too, as long as they're not heavy handed. So that's the challenge. I picked this tree because it had such nice light dynamics and it was a particular time of the day where I was getting some cast shadows across that center trunk and it really appealed to me I see this tree all the time because it's just right outside our window I'm gonna go in with some details on this graphic liner, this Odo graphic liner this is a pen I've never used before it's about the right size and all I'm doing is filling in some fine hatching in places where I need it to be a little finer than that Tombow brush pen and I'm evening out some of the hatching just to get even value in places where I want even value. There's so many little nubs and textural areas to this tree. That's another thing that was interesting. So I wanted to be able to portray that with pen and ink. You know, and I'm doing a lot of the detailing, pretty much most of the value shading in pen and ink. Um, you can do less of this if you're going to add line and wash color. And, and now I'm going to go in with this brush pen, the Copic brush pen, another one I've never used. I've used ones like it, other brands. You get a just totally different line quality with a brush pen. Uh, you can go in and add big patches of really dark solid areas, but a little uh, feather out, you can feather out to a, a really hairline takes a lot of uh, hand control to do that, but uh, it just gives you an expression to your line you can't get with multi-liners or single weight pens. So I'm, I'm using it uh, to fill in areas where I want it dark, but also to give some of those expressive lines. Now I love the pen. It was great. Compared well to the Pilot or the Pentel that I have. 
Pentel Pocket Pen, I think, is the one that I've been most familiar with using. I'm getting close to being done with the inking. I'm just trying to get some of those nice deep pops. Yep, so there it is. Really happy with that. That's going to show well through the color. And I'm not going to have to do much in terms of the color. Just a little bit of splashing and I want to be very loose this time with the color. Very loose and washy using my M Gram palette here. I've cleaned it off and I think we're going to go with a very limited palette. Um, that's nickel quinacridone gold. I'm going to add in some of this uh, transparent orange oxide up here. I'm going to bring in some cobalt violet for places. In the shadow, I'm going to let all this sort of pool and mix together. Uh, we'll bring in some ultramarine blue, a little bit of CP out there. And it's going to be a fairly warm to cool mix. And I really am just going to, you'll, you'll see here in a minute, I'm really going to splash this paint on and be very loose. I've got a tight drawing, I'm going to be loose with the paint. And this will go real quick. So I'm tapping that on there. I wasn't getting enough water. I want some really big drips and splashes. So I keep adding water, trying to get that. Get some bigger, bigger drips and splashes. I don't mind all the little speckles that spatter everywhere. That was part of it. I, whatever was going to happen, I wanted to just let it happen. I'm going to pull this paint into certain areas to make more sense of the values shortly but right now I'm just trying to get splashy paint down there and I want a bigger drip so that's why I'm squeezing it out here like an eyedropper so now I'm just gonna pull it into areas and I decided to spray it to get it to flow a little more a little better I'm just trying to uh, just blotting up some of those sprinkles so there some of them aren't so dark now I'm pulling that paint those splashes into some areas that make sense value wise what you have to do too while this is wet is you have to keep the darks out of the areas where you want it light where you want to preserve the whites I could have uh, masked off those areas but there weren't a lot of them and I thought I could probably paint around them or lift before they got too dark in those areas. So that's what I'm doing here. I've pulled the paint into the shadow areas where it's logical and now I'm just lifting while it's wet. Adding water and lifting to keep a few areas really bright on the highlight side. And I could already see that the splashes and the loose painting is going to work. It's going to work the way I wanted it to. So that's always kind of whew, uh, done it. Didn't ruin it. Yay. Whoopee. Got to be bold though. No guts, no glory. Now I'm, I'm just painting around that trunk. On the highlight side, I'm doing some negative painting with a little bit of dark. So that will stand out more. It will look more like a highlight and light hitting the side of the trunk. So this is all going really, really quick. So I'm able to show you bits and pieces of this in real time. I just wanted to pull some color a little further up into those limbs just to lead your eye up out of the piece a little bit. So more violet in that shadow. I'm just trying to vary the colors, make it interesting. Really like the limited color scheme though. I thought it worked well. I know I didn't want to paint this as some dull, muddy gray. I was dabbing in a few spots here and there in the low lights, trying to keep it nice and dynamic. The shadows nice and dynamic. 
That was what attracted me to this image in the first place. You know, look around when wherever you go and we all have great cameras on our phones these days and you'll just see stuff, you know. I was just I was actually had a cup of coffee in my hand walking towards a window. Looked out and this apple tree sits about 30 feet from one of our windows. And the light was just hitting it just right. And I've looked at that tree a thousand times. Uh, but on this day, it just had a quality. And the, the way the shadows hit the trunk just had a design and a dynamic to it that I really loved. So I'm finishing up with some lifting. Just a little bit of highlight lifting. I'm using a scrubber, a very small scrubber. When you use scrubbers, make sure you don't actually scrub. I know I say that every time I talk about scrubbers, but it will peel and peel back the paper a little bit. If you have good quality cotton paper, that won't matter. You can still paint over it. I won't be, but you can still paint over it. Here I'm just softening an edge with that same scrubber. You can't tell how much pressure I'm putting on that scrubber, but I'm not putting much few last touches here and there with some light washes just to kind of put some base down there to that ground a little bit more dark pop in that corner and we're just about done and I'm really very happy with this you know this is a mind of watercolor thing uh, where watercolor did some of the work and delighted me and worked hand in hand with the detail work that I did so I mean, you can't complain about that this is what's so exciting about watercolor thanks for watching everybody I hope that was interesting to you maybe gave you some Inktober inspiration thank you so much patrons for sponsoring this channel we'll see everybody in the next video bye bye